Thank you very much, Al. That's a, a very generous, even with the magna, I was, that was a magnanimous introduction. Uh, as Al said, I, I do get a lot of speaking requests, and um, uh, I really just ask uh, three things. Uh, is it a good cause? Hebrew University, the best, okay? Is it a great couple we're honoring? Stu and Fran, out of the ballpark, okay? And lastly, are the funds, are the funds gonna to go to something I care about? And besides just the Hebrew University and the Smith Center for Earth Resources, Agriculture, Food and Environment is like right in my sweet spot. <laughs> so it's a treat to be here uh, this evening with you. As Al said, I got an honorary doctorate from the Hebrew University and um, I not only got a doctorate out of that day, but I also got a, um, a column. Uh, it was, uh, uh, and, and for me, like, that's just the, the bee's knees. I mean, if I can get a doctorate and a column um, out of an event, um, uh, I can't tell you how good that is. And this, uh, this was two years ago, and the, the um, ceremony took place um, exactly at the time that uh, British universities were in the process of uh, banning Israeli scholars um, uh, because of Israel's uh, occupation. And um, this is something that upset me very much as a graduate of Oxford University uh, to see this happening. So I was sitting on the, the stage in the amphitheater and the five honorary degree recipients were kind of over here and then the real recipients, probably 50 or 60 of them were, were over there. They were all dressed in white, uh, white shirts, men and women. And um, they started to read the, the degrees off. And um, uh, I must have been one out of four were Israeli Arabs. Uh, there was Muhammad and there was Khalil and there was Suha getting PhDs. And in the program, they even had kind of their, their dedications to their professors. And I, I used that scene actually to write a column saying this university uh, that you're, you're trying to ban its professors from uh, teaching or, or uh, studying and contributing to research in British universities is granting PhDs to more Arabs probably than any university in the region. So I wanna thank Hebrew University for that fact, for my honorary degree, and for that great column I got out of it. Israel's universities are its oil wells. They never run dry. And they are truly the key to Israel's competitive advantage in today's world. Israel is a high enabling, imagination enabling society. And institutions like the Hebrew University are the engines for that imagination. The last mega problem is biodiversity loss. The fact that we are now losing one new species, according to Conservation International, every 20 minutes. In a world that's hot, flat, and crowded, biodiversity loss is becoming devastating. We are like the flood, and therefore, we have to be like Noah. We are the age of Noah. We are the first generation of human beings that are going to have to think like Noah. We are the first generation of human beings, and particularly our kids, who are actually going to have to have strategies for saving the last two pair. Because we, and more importantly, our children, will actually meet the last two pair of more and more species in our lifetime. And so I end where I began. That is ET. Energy technology is the search for abundant, cheap, clean, reliable electrons and molecules. And the country and company and community and university that wins that race will own the most energy security, economic security, national security, competitive industries, healthy population, and global respect. Thanks to the Hebrew University, Israel is in that race. But friends, it's the biggest race in the world. 
Jeff Immelt, the head of GE, says in my book, Tom, if you want to be big, you got to be big in big things. You want to be big as a country? You got to be big in big things. And there will be nothing bigger than E.T. There will be nothing bigger than E.T. And therefore, what we're all doing here tonight in supporting the Hebrew University in the pursuit of the E.T. solutions could not be more important. So if you take one thing away from this talk, please take this. Whatever you thought about green before, whatever you thought about green, oh, a bunch of people in sandals and beads, you know, in teepees, get all that out of your head. No, no, no. Green is about that search for ET, abundant, cheap, clean, reliable electrons and molecules to answer the biggest questions of the 21st century. And that's really what I've been trying to do in my work is to redefine green. You know, I've said before, to name something is to own it. If you can name an issue, you can own the issue. The world is flat. Well, one of the problems with green, with ET, was that historically, over the last 30, 40 years, it was actually named by its opponents, by the people who impugned it. And they named it liberal, tree-hugging, sissy, girly man, unpatriotic, Vaguely European, vaguely European, <laughs> vaguely European. Well, I'm here to tell you, friends, get all that out of your head. In a world where ET will be the biggest thing, green is geopolitical, geostrategic, geoeconomic, capitalistic, patriotic. Green is the new red, white, and blue, and green is the new blue and white. Thank you very much.